Welcome everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to go through how to configure a Cisco wireless LAN controller for roaming. Um, so these are the objectives, so really important. First thing we need to do is make sure we've got a common wireless LAN on both controllers. So I've created that already, but we'll just show you the, the, the common wireless LAN across the, um, the controllers. And if you're interested in knowing how to do that, please look at my previous videos. Um, then we need to make sure that both the controllers in the same mobility group. So again, this is done when you do an initial configuration of, of the wireless LAN controller. Um, and again, I've got a previous video which you can have a look at if you want to know how to do that. Um, thirdly, you need to make sure that the virtual interface on both the controllers is the same. So again, I, I did this on my previous videos. So it's done that. It's done during the initial configuration stage. And I've got both my interfaces configured as 1.1.1.1. Um, so once once those three parameters are the same, the next part is you need to configure the controller as the same mobility group member. So once you've got both of them running up, up and running and both of them with the same RF group and same uh, virtual interface, you then configure the IP address of and the MAC address of each uh, controller into each other's mobility group members. Um, once that's done, we're ready to go. So we simply um, connect to the, the wireless LAN. Um, and then we shut down one of the wireless LANs and make it roam across the other side um, to verify the connections on on the laptop. So this is this is my lab I've got set up here. So I've got um, a layer two switch here, uh, and I've got a couple of controllers. So um, both of these controllers are on different VLANs. So I've got the the lower one here. I've got on VLAN ten. Um, therefore, it's connected to this access point here. So this access point associates to this controller on VLAN ten. And there's the IP address for VLAN 10. Uh, and then this second controller is associated to VLAN 11. So uh, again, I've got the IP address here. And my uh, second access point is connected to VLAN 11 also. Um, so my, my layer 3 is provided by my 8, 887 router here. And it's got a trunk connection across there where all the VLANs are available. So um, both my controllers are up and running. Um, so if we just go straight into the controller, so that controller is 10.20.1.100 and this other controller here is 10.1.1.100. Um, so we'll go straight into the controllers now. Okay, so this is my controller 1, WLC1, and I've got WLC2 there. I've um, HTTPS onto my controller. So um, the first thing we'll, we'll, we'll look at is the, the wireless LANs. Um, so there's my wireless LAN. So I've created a, a wireless LAN called Roam. Okay, and it's, it's enabled, it's ready to go. If I look at the advanced section, I've got DHCP configuration. So my wireless LAN controller is my DHCP server. And so therefore, that's my management address of the wireless LAN controller. So that's all set up. Uh, in terms of security, I'm using WPA2 with a pre-shared key. So I've got a, a password set up already, ready to go. So that's fine. Uh, if you look at the controller section, and if you look at the interfaces, I've set up a... A, an interface name called Rome, which is part of VLAN 30, and it gives out a 30.1.1 address. And if you look at the DHCP server and the scopes, I've got a, a DHCP scope set up for wireless LAN called Rome. Let's have a look at the um, wireless LAN 2 control configuration. So if you just look at the wireless LANs, again, it's exactly identical, same wireless LAN. So it, please make sure that when you do creating a, a, a wireless LAN that needs to roam, you give it the same profile name and same SSID on both controllers. So if we look into that, again, I've got the same configurations. It's connected to my, my Roam interface in, in terms of advanced. So I've got this controller as my DHCP server rather than my uh, controller 1. In terms of security, again, I've got WPA2 with a pre-shared key, and it's got the same key authentication as well. So that it doesn't need to re-authenticate. The client doesn't need to re-authenticate. Uh, and we just go straight in there. Just a quick look at the controller in configurations and um, the mobility group. So if you look at the um, controller section, so this is wireless LAN 2. Uh, my default mobility group name is called RF group um, and the RF group name is called RF group also. So if we look at the same information on WLC1, go into controller, same one. So this is my WLC1. I've got it as RF group. An RF group. 
quickly go back to the interfaces on there. So there's my virtual interface called 1.1.1.1. Again, on here, interfaces, my virtual interface 1.1. So if we look at our, our lab guide, so we've got a common wireless LAN. We've got the same mobility group called RF group. We've got the same virtual interface, which is 1.1.1. So the next, next stage is to configure each controller as the same mobility group member. So if we go back to our wireless. So from, so I'm on currently on WLC1, so from here you click on Mobility Management and then Mobility Groups. As soon as you click Mobility Groups, what you will see is the MAC address of the controller you're connected to at the moment. So this is my Wireless LAN Controller 1, that's the MAC address and that's the Management IP address. So you need to make a note of that um, because we need to configure the other side. So if we look at these wireless LAN 2 controller, go into mobility management, mobility groups. So this is the MAC address of wireless LAN controller 2, and this is the MAC the IP address of wireless LAN controller 2. So um, starting from WLC1, you click on new, and the member IP address has got to be the IP address of WLC2, which is 1021.100. Okay, and the MAC address, so you need to make sure you've got this MAC address. So I just do a right click, copy that, go into there, and then we apply that. So th the group name is the same, so that's fine. Just click on apply, and it adds that into your group members. So at the moment, it's showing control and data path down. So we just need to configure the other side. So go into that, click on new. So this member is going to be the WLC1, which is this IP address here. So it's 10.1.1.100. And then the MAC address for this side, you do a copy that, bring it in here, and we paste that in, and click on Apply. So it needs to start communications, and it will take a, f a couple of minutes, maybe, um, you know, maybe a minute or so to come back up. Uh, but in the meantime, what you can do is do a ping to the other side. So if, if we ping that server, we should be able to see a result. So there you go. So it can it can ping the mobility peer, and we've received it sent three pings and received three pings back. So that's looking good. So in a few minutes, that will turn back to uh, that will turn as con configured as up status. So we'll just wait for that to happen. I'm just going to pause the video for a second. So that's up and running. Uh, all you have to do is refresh the screen. I was just waiting there for no good reason. Um, so as soon as it refreshes, so you can see that the RF group status is up on both sides, and and the roaming group is fine. Everything's ready to go. All we need to do is connect our PC to the wireless LAN. So if we look at our wireless connections, I've got wireless roam, and we say connect to that, and the password is C I S C O one. I just to retype that. C I S C O one two three four five, and say no to that. If we just bring up our network settings, so there we go. It's connected. Look at the IP address. I've got I received an IP address of thirty dot one dot one dot eleven. If we just kick off a ping test, there we go. So I've got a continuous ping running here. Just I'll just quickly show you. So it's ping the default gateway, and that's continuously running. Okay. So uh, just close that up, and if we look at our client where it's connected to at the moment, so if we look on there and details, there's one client. So it's connected to WLC one. We've got one client. He's there. Um, sorry, uh, go back to that. Look at the there. So it's it, we've got AP one right, and if we look at the clients, there it is. So we've got one client with that MAC address which ends in AB connected to the right hand side access point. So just to double confirm there's nothing on this side. So look at monitor, look at the clients, there's no clients at all on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this access point um, and we're going to disable that access point. So what I will do is just going to reduce the screen slightly here so that we can see the ping test at the same time. Uh, there we go. Okay, and while we're doing that, we'll um, 
will disable the, the right hand side AP and it will see it roam to the other side. Okay, so if we go into the access point all AP details, click on the access point and we'll, we'll disable the right hand side AP where it's connected to now. There we go. And then we click on apply. So we should see maybe one ping drop. So we've, there we go. So we lost the ping, but it's, it's now reconnected. It's got the same IP address. So if we look at the client section, so there's no clients on, let me just expand that back out again. There's no clients on, on the, uh, the right hand one, but if we look at the WLC2 and look at the clients, there we go. It's rejoined to the AP2 on the left hand side. So that's roaming. We didn't have to do any uh, configurations on the um, controller, everything just went straight across, no problems. Because it's got the, the, the tunnel on, across the mobility, uh, it even kept the same IP address. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you very much for listening um, and look forward to you in the next video.